Thank you. Thank you very much. It's very good to see all of you here this evening. I would like to welcome you. Today, I am going to speak to you as a fellow Singaporean and a fellow voter. On Saturday, we will go to the polls and I will vote for my friend Dan Ji Seng. And I would like you to allow you, me to tell you why. The President is the first citizen of our nation. I love our nation. And I will only vote for a candidate who also loves our nation, our people, our friends and neighbours. I will not vote for those who defend the right of the government to hide information about the GIC from us. I will not vote for past members of the PAP who suddenly believe in transparency, but who came round to this belief after so many years of wholeheartedly approving of keeping information from us. I will not vote for those who have defended the right to imprison people without trial. And now, keep silent on whether it is right or wrong to torture those people while under detention. I will not vote for those who support a party that believes in torture. And I will not vote for those who are happy to receive millions of dollars in a salary while their own policies have made so many of us poor. In, in short, I will not vote for those who do not share the aspirations, the hopes and the dreams, the fears and the uncertainties of our people. I will vote for a person in whom I can invest my commitment to the nation, my love for its traditions, my pride in its history, my sense of brotherhood with my fellow citizens. I will vote for the person whom I can trust to safeguard our reserves and ensure that the top jobs go to the right people. But most importantly, I want to vote for the person who holds within himself the Singaporean nation. I will vote for the candidate whose sense of decency has called him out of a quiet, private life, a modest and simple life, to serve the people. I want to be able to say confidently to my president, go and represent our nation on the international stage. Go and be a dignified host to our visitors. Go and tell the world how proud we are of our little red dot. I want to tell you a personal story. I have a little niece who was born in Singapore, but she has spent all her life abroad. When she was nine, she was very curious about our presidency because it's very different in her country. So her mother, my, my sister, encouraged her to write to our then president. And he invited her for tea at the Istana. They had soft drinks and curry puffs and spring rolls. And then he took her for a tour of the building. And what all our tourist attractions, all our shopping malls were not able to do was achieved in that one afternoon. He made her a guest of our nation. He showcased our country to her. He was her host. What do we look for in a host? A host is someone who represents the dignity and honour of the household, who is responsible for its hospitality and responsible for welcoming strangers. So that little child came away with a very high estimation of our country. She came away knowing the high standards we have here, knowing that we are a land of warmth, knowing that we embody the values of humanity. To me, the center of our nation is the Istana. Every time I pass by the 
ceremonial entrance at the eastern end of Orchard Road, I, I feel proud because I know that everything that is best about our country, everything that is nicest, is embodied there. In the olden days, Parliament appointed someone, selected someone who was at the height of his career and asked them to represent us. And then 20 years ago, Parliament saw fit to expand the responsibilities of the President and asked him to safeguard the family savings and safeguard the family elders. Why? About the family savings, our national reserves, the answer is pretty obvious. But in terms of our family elders, the people who hold the top jobs in Singapore, which the President has approval powers over, we look for the values and the virtues of wisdom, of courage, of pride, a sense of purpose, selflessness, patience, a good name and a commitment to the future of our country. And we also look for someone similar to head our country, someone who can act justly. And I would like to say to you, as a fellow voter, a fellow Singaporean, on this historic occasion, that Mr. Tan Ji Se has these qualities. He is the man I want to see in the Istana, because to me, he represents the future of our country, not the past. A future where the divisions that plague us can be healed rather than deepened. A future where our president will lead us as one people, not divide us according to whether we are rich or poor, a university graduate or not a university graduate, a citizen or a foreigner, a PAP voter or an opposition voter. Because the world we inhabit today is a different world. We want a president who will take us forward not preserve the past, preserve those divisions, and then call it stability. I ask you to watch Tan Ji Se, talk to him, and you will see as I do, as his family does, as his friends and colleagues do, that he will bring honour and simplicity and dedication to the presidency. We don't need many university degrees in the Istana. In fact, out of our six presidents, four did not have degrees. And even though Tanji says academic credentials are unquestionable, before his skills and his knowledge, he is fundamentally a decent man. He will help to unite us a people that have been so unfairly divided in these last several years. And so on Saturday, I will go to the polls. And for these reasons, and these reasons alone, I will vote Tanji Se as my president. So I'd like to thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to you. And if you'll allow me one personal comment. As I have watched her over this last year, and I have come to know her, I have to say that I cannot think of anyone else whom I would like to see as our First Lady than Mrs. Patricia Tan. Thank you very much. Good evening.